Hello, welcome back to another episode from Driving Britain. Today we're going to be looking at British memes. American memes about the British. All right, guys, we thought this afternoon we would show you some British memes. I've seen the, the bottle of water meme one too many times. Oh, yeah. Yes, that one is <laughs> Sorry, let me just I've delete some. <laughs> now, for this, we're going to be looking at a video that's put out by Jolly. Their link's in the description. They've basically gone and sat in front of some high school kids and showed them some of the American memes about British people. And that's fine because we take the mickey out of Americans plenty, so it's fair. So what are the main stereotype memes about British people that are running through the US? And do UK kids agree with it? Some of the memes about UK people, well, it's kind of, you know, stereotype stuff, but at the same time, most of them, well, end up being a bit true. <laughs> okay, let's get into the video and see what they think of it. <laughs> First up, British people will be like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Right, okay. <laughs> Well, if you're from Essex, then that's pretty much how you're going to say it. Yeah, I guess that we do pronounce words a lot different to how they're written down. So that's kind of accurate. <laughs> Tuesday, I don't get how you, you can say it any different. Yeah. That is true. <laughs> Friday? No, I don't get that one. Saturday as well. Saturday. Sat Saturday. Saturday. Oh, I hear it now, I hear it now. Yeah. Sat Saturday. Sunday's correct. <laughs> <laughs> American barbecue, British... I think that they're basing some of the accent on London and Essex, more a bit towards Essex, I think, because they do have a different pronunciation for some of the words. But that's because they're also wrong. <laughs> Sorry, everybody from Essex. But let's face it, most people from Essex, you've got that many stereotypes about you already, how you pronounce words. That's not the worst of them. You should be just taking that one and be pleased with that one. <laughs> American barbecue, British barbecue, yeah, that's about right. British barbecues are pretty boring, especially compared to American ones. British chocolate compared to American chocolate. American chocolate is pretty horrible. So I'm agreeing with all of these. I don't know what they think. Barbecue, British chocolate, American chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> what have they done to the Pope? <laughs> <laughs> they have to get my man back day. in a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> is that the same person? No, no it, really it really looks like, like it. Like it. Like it. Looks the British barbecue is quite what? basic. It's just a little, maybe like sauce. Yeah, that's what the Pope looks like on the weekend when he gets the beers out. He's finished with all the religious stuff and he can just chill out in front of the TV and a few cans. That's what he normally looks like on the weekend. <laughs> Hey, if you're religious, it's a joke. <laughs> There's burger. Yeah, it's not great. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not great. But our chocolate is top tier. British people, American food is so unhealthy. British food. Oh, you're right. It can be unhealthy, but look at that meal. Doesn't that look nice? I really want to eat all of that right now. I can't see anything on that plate that I think isn't nice. And for those of you in America that are wondering what these black things are, that's called black pudding. Oh no, no, it gets better. It's not just a dodgy sort of name. It's congealed pig's blood and then fried. Now what can you think of that tastes nicer or that's a better image in your mind than congealed pig's blood and then fried? Actually, it tastes really, really nice. It sounds disgusting and it is disgusting and you've probably got hair and nail and all sorts in there, but it tastes really, really nice. So if you didn't know what it was and you tried it, you'd think that's just really, really good. If you knew what it was, you wouldn't even try it. As for all of this other stuff, come on, let's face it, you want to eat that now, don't you? Unless, of course, you're vegetarian or vegan, in which case you're sending hate messages through the comment section right now. But don't worry, there is some bread. Okay, before we offend any more people, let's move on. But that's delicious. They, they, serve, that for I, our, I don't they care. serve that for our breakfast club at school. Now that is beautiful. <laughs> you can't get better than that. That's just the definition of English. And with a cup of tea? Yeah, I take the mickey out of Americans now and again on these different videos because of the different food combinations that they make. Things like southern fried chicken mixed with ice cream and all sorts of bizarre stuff. But I guess what you're really doing is you're adding all of the foods that you like together to make just nice things. Well, that's pretty much the British, the English breakfast. All of the things that we like, all on one big plate. Now that is a very, very big plate. You know, nobody's going to eat all of that. Yeah. What do you think about how unhealthy your English breakfast is? I don't really think about it. I just want to eat all of it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if that's bad for you. That's, that, that that's peak actually, English food. I had that for breakfast this morning. British cuisine, best what in the world. What is that? That's rank. No, that mashed potato, that just looks nasty. It doesn't look like proper nice creamy mash. The gravy just looks like water. And that is not a sausage. 
that's not even a frankfurt so that's, i'm not even sure what that's supposed to be but proper actual sausages either shallow fried or even oven baked with proper creamy mash and then a nice beefy flavored gravy that's nice that thing that they've got on that image that's that's what Americans made thinking it looks like a British version but that's because you haven't tried the real proper decent tasting British version and that's the lie that we're going to stick with <laughs> now that one does look disgusting but proper sausage mash gravy that is nice <laughs> and that's not British cuisine. That is that's disgusting. Yeah. First of all, that's a hot dog sausage. Yeah, that is a yeah, hot dog sausage. sausage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's just that's stick and mash. Now, we've got enough problems with the rolls being German. We don't want the sausages to be German as well. <laughs> <laughs> Fish and chips, sausage and mash. That's oh, they're failing. <laughs> so you're saying this picture right here is number two? Well, not with hot dogs, yeah, actual sausage, like, yeah. Good Lord. British food. <laughs> Welcome to Britain. Okay. <laughs> All right. All six of my brain cells are assembling so I can pronounce. I don't even know what that says. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Yeah, Worcestershire is one of the more difficult words, I guess, because it, it just doesn't sound anything like what it looks. And there are a lot of words in English that are pronounced a lot different to how they're written down. And that's one of the reasons why English is such a complicated language, is because there's so many unnecessary letters in all of our words and it is stupid and i think that we should write words how they sound i think they should be phonetically spelled except for the word phonetically because it just sounds way too complicated <laughs> it is a pretty hard word to pronounce to be fair worcester style worcester style i'm english and i don't even know <laughs> break it down you got war then you got does that mean that they've never had worcestershire sauce <laughs> <laughs> then you got erishire Worcestershire. <laughs> it's actually pronounced Worcestershire. It's like Leicester. Leicester. No, I can spell Leicester because Leicester, of Leicester, Leicester Square. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you know Leicester? Yeah, but Leicester's another word that's spelt completely different to how it sounds. And there's just no reason for it. I don't know why we have such a complicated language, why there's so many unnecessary letters in so many of our words. Leicester Square is spelled. Yeah, L E I C. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you got it wrong. We just say Worcester, don't we? Mm -hmm. With the sauce, you mean? Worcester sauce. Yeah. But does it say Worcestershire on the bottles? Yeah, it does say Worcester sauce, and you do call it Worcester sauce, but you know that it says Worcestershire, and you know that it is Worcestershire sauce as the actual proper name. Yeah. yeah. But we just call it Worcester sauce. Yeah. Oh, that's poor from us. <laughs> <laughs> do British people still do the what accent? We still do the accent when nobody's <laughs> around because we, because we are the accent. It is the accent. Yeah, it is the accent. We can't authentic. get rid of it. I think they mean like, oh, tea and crumpets. <laughs> Can you guys do a good of Yeah, I don't suppose we really have much variety in our accent for people that are watching our videos in the US because I suppose we sound pretty much the same across the country. But if you listen to somebody from, say, Doncaster or from Liverpool, versus somebody from London or someone from Cornwall or someone from Essex or Scotland or Wales or Ireland you've got completely different accents and it's just the same as the US if you've got the US and you shrunk it right down to be the same size as the UK but you kept all of the states you think how much variety there is between different states with the different accents then the UK is exactly the same it's just a, a very small version of it all of your different areas still have all of the different accents but the accent that you get to hear on American TV of British people is always these kind of an estuary English accent. So it's not really a London accent. It's not really a Midlands accent. It's somewhere in the middle. It's not quite Oxfordshire. It's just somewhere in the middle. American accent? I think I can. Do you want to read that meme in an American accent? Do British people still do the accent when nobody's around? Do British people still do the accent when nobody's around? <laughs> <laughs> do British people still do the accent when nobody's around. See that? See that? That was beautiful. That was pretty good. Normally, people just go for the complete caricature. Full cowboy. The British people still do the accent when nobody's around. <laughs> yeah! Uh, yeah. I think Harry is cartoons. adjusting great to America. Every time I ask for a biscuit, they give me a scone. Ooh. So to them, a biscuit's a scone. Do you want me to show you what an American biscuit is? It does look like a American biscuit. American biscuits, they are pretty much exactly like you're saying. It does look like a scone and it tastes like a scone. It's just a sweet bread. 
has nothing to do with biscuits at all not as you would know a biscuit in the UK UK biscuits they're kind of yeah, more like what the Americans would call a cookie but it gets worse because Americans then also pour white gravy onto it now their white gravy is like a sausage gravy lumpy stuff it tastes really nice but it looks absolutely disgusting that is not a biscuit. <laughs> That's not a biscuit. Wait, what? <laughs> How do we eat things that look like that in England? Probably cut it in half, or maybe. Cut it in half. Have it with jam and cream. Jam, jam. Yeah. yeah. In America, they have those with gravy. <laughs> oh, I thought, I thought we were. Oh, I thought we were having gravy with everything. How can you have a gravy with a biscuit? <laughs> you see, we treat them as cakes. We have them as a pudding. So we would have cream on there. We'd have jam on there and stuff like that. What you wouldn't do is make it part of your main meal because yeah, it is kind of bready pastry type stuff, but it's just not, not like that. It's a cake, and what we wouldn't do is stick that weird white lumpy sauce with it, <laughs> which just tastes nice, sure, but it just doesn't look nice. Biscuits and gravy looks like that. That's worse. That's worse. <laughs> That's worse. <laughs> that is actually disgusting. <laughs> you know, to us that looks like you've eaten it, and then well reproduced it let's say <laughs> it just doesn't look good uh, what is it <laughs> this doesn't, that's not gravy yeah. <laughs> what is this snack it's biscuits and gravy the way they describe it, it sounds a lot nicer than that <laughs> in england booster shot is spelled oh god not one of these booster <laughs> shots <laughs> borchester shot shot borchester shot Booster. Oh! <laughs> yes, English can be weird. It can be understood through tough, thorough thoughts, though. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a pickle. Translation, a catastrophically bad situation <laughs> with potentially fatal consequences. Uh, a bit of a pickle. <laughs> yeah, I guess we do kind of downplay stuff. We would be a lot more blasé about it. Very, very serious situations, and we just kind of... Yeah, that's that's quite bad. We should probably do something about that <laughs> rather than getting in a bit of a flap about it. Well, yeah, it's not, not good when you hear that. Okay. <laughs> that's a bad <laughs> life. The thing is, everyone in Britain understands it. Yeah. It's like a code. Yeah, could do. Translation, no. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. 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 Yeah, but it's kind of a polite no, though, isn't it? You kind of, you're not completely writing off the fact that you're never going to do it. But at the same time, you're letting people know that you really don't want to do it. <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> okay. I've done that. I've done that. I'll see how I feel. I don't want to do it. Can't be asked. Translation. I won't be coming and yeah, we exactly. both know that. <laughs> it's a community. Everyone. Yeah, that's true, yeah. But again, it's just about politeness. You don't want to outright say to somebody, I'm not doing that. I really can't be bothered. But you don't want to be quite that blunt with your friends. So you say, yeah, I'll see how I feel. But really, it does mean... Not a chance. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to come up with any excuse I can think of so that I don't have to do that. <laughs> Too polite for our own good. Everyone understands it. I always say that. That's every, when my friends that's they're like, "Do you want to come out on Friday?" I'll see. Like, oh, I'll see. Maybe I'm. I'm not, maybe I might be a bit sick on Friday. <laughs> Plus, it's also you don't want to commit to it. You, like you're saying there, yeah. Oh, you're going to come out on Friday. You're going to come out on the weekend. You haven't got there yet, you don't know whether you're going to want to. You might come up with something better that you want to do and you don't want to have already committed yourself to have to go out with your mates and stuff like that if you've got a better offer. <laughs> Which sounds about cold and harsh, but you never know. You just don't like to commit to stuff in advance when you could come up with something better that you would prefer to do. Which might just be you want to just sit down in your own room playing games rather than go out because you just can't be bothered, you're tired or whatever. So it's not just that you're going to get a better offer, it's just that you just might want to do something different. But that's a, a true stereotype, we are like that. But again, it just comes down to us being a little bit too polite for our own good, I guess. <laughs> I'm planning to be a bit sick. Yeah. <laughs> Let me check my diary. Sure, but... Oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm sick on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> I've used that a couple of times. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, well, Americans, you kind of do that as well, though, don't you? Because when you take a job somewhere, you have to designate how many sick days you're going to have before you even start the job. So you'll get like 10 sick days or seven sick days that you're allocated for the year because you're somehow going to know how many days you're going to be all for during the entire year. <laughs> so at least we're saying it as a funny thing. You've got it as a literal thing. <laughs> yeah, might have used that with you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. great. How a Brit responds to being the most deeply insulted 
they've ever been in their whole life. Bit harsh. Yeah, yeah, that is so true. <laughs> yeah. That is so true. British. Yeah, I guess, again, it's just politeness, isn't it? We wouldn't really let on just how much we're kind of affected or annoyed or upset by whatever somebody said. We would just be a bit more casual and blase about it. Because that's a bit harsh, isn't it? <laughs> people could see the devil himself and they'd be like, mm, odd bloke in it. <laughs> That's true, dude. British people are it's very true, good at yeah. underplaying what's actually like. We say it's I think the kind of, kind of stiff upper lip British type thing, it is true to quite a big extent, seeing the devil and just saying a weird fella. I'm not so sure, maybe. <laughs> we probably really wouldn't come out with something that most other people would come out with, but... See something that's beautiful, you say, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> or see something that's totally like whack, you say, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> like, why do you think we do that? Because they're trying to be polite. So you'd be polite to the devil? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They put tea in microwaves. <laughs> <laughs> we mentioned this last time, but a lot of Americans, not all, but I'd say probably the majority of Americans don't have no kettles. <laughs> but you can just buy one. You see, the reason why this is so confusing to people from the UK is because. We use electric kettles which are really quick and efficient for boiling water. Not only that, nowadays you can get kettles where you press a button and it issues you just one cup of boiling water. And he does it within about you know, eight or nine seconds. It's really, really good, really quick. But what we used to have to do is put kettles on top of our old gas stoves and then it would slowly come to the boil and the whistle would go off and all the rest of it. But that's what we used to be like in the 60s. And then we developed the electric kettle and we started to use that. So to realise that America are still using what we used 50 odd years ago, it seems really, really bizarre. But that's just because Americans don't really drink hot tea and coffee as much. You drink a lot of hot coffee, but you have dedicated coffee makers rather than a kettle to make like an instant coffee. Whereas in the UK, instant coffee is probably one of the biggest consumed coffees at home rather than a percolator type coffee. But let's face it, percolator coffee does taste pretty nasty a lot of the time, doesn't it? We used to use percolators, but that's because we had nothing better. <laughs> we didn't have a kettle. I feel like came in every house. They're like 15 quid in Tesco's. Less! You can buy kettles in the US, but the other thing is as well, the American power system, because a lot of American houses run on a 110 volt, but you do have like a, a double power set so you can get the equivalent of 240 volts out of things like um, some of the kitchen sockets so you can run kettles it's just that they might run a little bit slow but in an older US house then a kettle might trip it quite often so you probably especially for the amount of time that you're going to be using a kettle you probably just wouldn't bother but to us that just seems really really bizarre <laughs> when you lost your PE kit at school and they'd make you wear stuff out of the hospital. Oh, no. <laughs> That's happened to me. It before. smells. That happened to you, really? <laughs> you open the door, it's like, you have to like push in, it's like wafts of just kind of, it's disgusting. <laughs> the room is not fun. This is so relatable. <laughs> you get there and you're wearing like a crop top and a <laughs> skirt. <laughs> like, when I was at school, if there was nothing in lost property, you just had to go in your pants. What? Yeah. Dave, would you be allowed to do that? Primary school, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, no, you're right. No, you're right. Part of the yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Last up. We set to go. Yeah, yeah, got it. I think they'll probably make you play in your trousers if you didn't have your kit. But usually, if you hadn't got your kit, then you just wouldn't wouldn't have to do it. Because, yeah, schools did have lost property, but a lot of the time they wouldn't make you wear it. Because one of the biggest excuses that we used to use at school for, so that we didn't have to do PE was that you forgot your kit. Can, Can I, I park here, here mate? <laughs> yeah, man, sure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, sure is a real place. Yeah, apparently. Can I park here, mate? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah man, sure. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair enough. Yeah, man, sure. It's been a little taste of uh, some British memes. Did it live down to your expectations? It's just funny because then... you're laughing with someone. Like, if mm. I sat here alone laughing, then I'd be a bit <laughs> sad, probably. <laughs> Apologies to everyone watching this video alone. Yeah, in your room. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're laughing with us, they're yeah, not yeah. together. We'll, we'll see, see you jolly soon. soon. <laughs> okay, they're obviously at the end of their video. There's some quite funny ones in there. Most of them seem to be pretty much true. <laughs> remember, we've got reasons for each one of them or excuses, whichever way around you want to look at it. But half it just comes down to us being a bit too polite, I think. Too polite, stiff upper lip and playing down things. As for the language ones, yeah, I completely agree. I think that we've got... One of the worst sets of, well, I'll say the worst sets of spelling in the world, but I don't know, some of the other languages are pretty horrific. 
try writing your name in Chinese and see how that goes, <laughs> or in Sanskrit or something like that, you're going to struggle. But for unnecessary letters in the words, then yeah, we've got quite a lot of those. And in fact, quite a few American words are spelt different to the English version of the same word for that exact reason. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. What do you think about the memes? Do you think that they're true? If you're from the UK, do you think, yep, yeah, actually that fits me completely? If you're from another country, are those the same sort of things as what you think about the UK, about British people? Are they not just American memes, but are they also memes in your country about the British? <laughs> Some of them are quite funny either way. Okay, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.